Now let's get started with the rise and fall of Will Muschamp. In order to understand his coaching career, we need to take a look back at his rise as a player and as a coach first. Muschamp was born in Rome, Georgia, but grew up in Gainesville, Florida. His dad would take a head coaching job at Darlington High School in Darlington, Georgia to coach, and he became a high school star there. He decided to walk on to Georgia instead of playing for a lower level school and try to make the team. Most walk-ons don't even make the team to begin with, but what this guy did kind of shocked a lot of people. He not only made the team, but he became the team captain as a safety as senior year for the Bulldogs and was one of the hardest workers anyone had ever seen. Of course, he was never good enough for the NFL, so he went right into coaching. After graduating from Georgia, Muschamp became a graduate assistant coach at Auburn, where he worked under defensive coordinators Wayne Hall and Bill Oliver in 1995 and 1996. He spent one season each at the University of West Georgia and Eastern Kentucky as a defensive backs coach before he became the defensive coordinator at Valdosta State. In 2001, he joined Nick Saban's staff at LSU to coach linebackers before becoming LSU's defensive coordinator in 2002. In 2003, LSU would win the BCS National Championship, and Muschamp's defense led the nation in both scoring defense and total defense. Because he was so good, he went to the Dolphins with Nick Saban, and he did well there, but his heart was always in the coaching ranks. When the Auburn defensive coordinator position became available in 2006, he took the opportunity to return to the college game, and he did really well again there. On January 3, 2008, he interviewed for the vacant defensive coordinator job at Texas, and the next day he had resigned from Auburn to accept that job with the Longhorns. He did extremely well there, and was actually supposed to be the next head coach of Texas when Mac Brown left, and everyone was really excited for what he was going to do. But it wouldn't end up working out, and prior to leaving for Florida, Muschamp had been mentioned in association with head coaching job openings at Clemson, Tennessee, Washington, and Auburn. In December of 2010, Florida's athletic director announced that Will Muschamp would be the 23rd head coach of the Florida Gators to succeed Urban Meyer. In his first year as a head coach, Muschamp led the Gators to a 7-6 overall record and a 3-5 record in the SEC. This was the first losing conference record for the Gators since 1979. But he would get a pass as the following spring he brought in the number 5 recruiting class in the nation. In 2012, he led the Gators to an 11-2 record and kind of showed his potential. He had 4 wins over teams that were ranked amongst the top 12 at the end of the year, and this included Texas A&M, LSU, South Carolina, and Florida State. The season also included a near loss to non-BCS school Louisiana Lafayette, and a loss to Georgia, in which the Gators didn't score a touchdown, and this would cost them the SEC East title. Although the 2012 Gators did have a top-notch defense, the season was primarily hampered by a lack of offensive output, and quarterback Jeff Driscoll was just not that good. It initially appeared the success would continue in 2013, when the Gators started out 4-1. However, they would lose 7 consecutive games, their longest losing streak in recent memory. The 4-8 record was the Gators' first losing season since 1979. He had once again had a losing record in the SEC at 3-5, and, and this made him the first Gators coach to have two losing SEC records since the 1950s. This also ended a 22-year bowl streak that dated all the way back to 1991, when the Gators were coming off of probation. The season included two particular humiliating losses. The first was a homecoming loss to Vanderbilt, which was their first loss to the Commodores since 1988, and the first home loss to them since 1945. Muschamp's Gators also lost to an FCS school in Georgia Southern. This was their first loss to a lower division team in the history of the program, so this did not sit well in the eyes of Gator fans. Despite a terrible 2013 season, expectations were high for Muschamp and the Gators for the 2014 campaign. After a 42-13 homecoming loss to Missouri, some Gator fans called for Muschamp to be fired immediately. I remember this game very clearly, and it was one of the weirdest games I had ever seen. Missouri had managed to score touchdowns off a fumble recovery, a pick six, a punt return touchdown, a kickoff return touchdown, and a rushing touchdown. But Mizzou was that bad on offense they couldn't throw for one. They called for Muschamp's head after that game, but the athletic director would give him one more chance against their rival Georgia. They came in as a 10-point underdog, and were starting true freshman Trayon Harris. They ended up throwing the ball only six times, and the Gators compiled 428 rushing yards to upset the 11th ranked Bulldogs. After a 23-20 overtime home loss to South Carolina two weeks later though, it was announced that Muschamp would be stepping down following the conclusion of the 2014 regular season, citing the season's high number of losses as the reason why. Muschamp said, quote, I was given every opportunity to get it done here, and I simply didn't win enough games. That is the bottom line. I'm disappointed that I didn't get it done, and it is my responsibility to get it done. On December 12, 2014, a week after the end of the regular season, Muschamp became the defensive coordinator for the Auburn Tigers that was worth between $1.6 and $1.8 million annually. This deal made him the highest paid defensive coordinator in college football. Many people had said he would likely get another head coaching job in the future, but not this soon and not in the SEC, they said. This is why it absolutely shocked people when Muschamp was announced as the 34th head football coach of the South Carolina Gamecocks. 
He was set to replace the legendary Steve Spurrier, and many people questioned the hire from the get-go, including myself. The one thing they did love the most about him was the fact that he could recruit, and the team desperately needed talent. Apparently, one Power 5 head coach said, quote, He was just fired a year ago in the same division. Help me understand why he gets another job like that. Apparently, they had settled on him after Arizona head coach Rich Rodriguez had turned down an offer to become South Carolina's next head coach. Although Muschamp inherited a 3-9 team, he would go 6-7 in his first season as the head coach of the Gamecocks. In his second season at the helm, Muschamp improved to 9-4, including a 26-19 win over Michigan in the Outback Bowl. South Carolina's 5-3 conference record marked the program's first winning record in conference play since 2013, and Will Muschamp was defying the odds and proving people wrong. In his third year as the head coach of the Gamecocks, Muschamp led South Carolina to a 7-5 regular season record. His 22 wins through his first three seasons at South Carolina is the most amongst Gamecock head football coaches. His fourth season came in with one of the toughest schedules in the nation. South Carolina finished the year at 4-8, although they did upset number 3 Georgia on the road by way of a miracle and a Rodrigo Blankenship miss. But you also do have to consider the season didn't go as well as Jake Bentley got injured early in the year and backup quarterback Ryan Holinsky had to start as a true freshman. After that season, his record was 26-25, and 25, and his 25 losses through his first four seasons is the most amongst Gamecock head football coaches. Going into 2020, Muschamp's seat was hot, and I honestly thought he had deserved to be fired after the 2019 campaign. Despite having high-profile recruited quarterbacks on the roster like Luke Doty and Ryan Holinsky, graduate transfer Colin Hill was named the starting quarterback, and there was really not a whole lot of hype around the team this year. They lost their first game to Tennessee and second one to Florida before they beat Vanderbilt and Auburn, a team that was ranked at the time, and maybe he could salvage the year. But instead, they'd lose their next three games to LSU, Texas A&M, and Ole Miss, and the university had to make a decision, and they decided to fire him. They decided that earlier this evening, and his South Carolina tenure is officially over. He is the first head coach fired, and despite all the COVID-19 stuff, they had had enough, and it was time to go their separate ways. So let's examine why exactly he failed. We don't need a 15-minute spiel on why he failed at Florida, it's the fact he could never do anything on offense and never really had an elite quarterback. Why did he struggle at South Carolina? Basically the same thing. He only won two big games there and never had a good quarterback and the offense just could not put up points. And don't, and please don't tell me that Jake Bentley was a really good quarterback. Will Muschamp was always a good defensive coach and could get blue chip recruits to play for him, but he either didn't know what he was doing on offense or he didn't hire the right coordinators to do his job for him. I'm very curious to see who will be the coach in 2021 as current offensive coordinator and and former Georgia teammate of his, Mike Bobo, has been named the interim head coach. We will have to wait and see though, and they're an SEC school, so they should easily be able to attract a good coach. But what do you guys think? Why do you guys think Will Muschamp failed, and what do you think's in store for him next? If you're a South Carolina or a Florida fan, let me know what you think down in the comment section, and if you're a fan of any college football program, let me know another coach I should examine. But before you go, be sure to give the video a like, subscribe if you're new, comment your thoughts, suggest a future topic, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.